All right, everybody, welcome. Today, I've got a very special guest for this talk in the Accelerator, and uh, Mr. Neil Patel, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. He's pretty famous uh, if you follow anything related to entrepreneurial stuff. So if you, one of the top content marketers, his blog, Quick Sprout, is one of the few blogs. I really don't follow blogs, but I do follow yours and his email list. Uh, and then he's the owner of multiple businesses, uh, Crazy Egg, of course, Quick Sprout, Hello Bar, yeah. and Kiss Metrics. So these are tools for entrepreneurs, built multiple successful businesses, based out of San Francisco, but lives globally, flying all over the world. And we decided, I asked him, I said, Neil, with you, we can talk literally about 40 things. My hair looks a little crazy here. Uh, about 40 things, the best, I said, what are you best in the world at? And you said? Executing, getting stuff done fast. Which is perfect because everybody watching this, to have an idea, I, I read something you like this. Let me see if I can remember. It said you should give yourself one point for having an idea, 10 points or something for having a plan, and you know, 90 or 89 points for actually doing it. Very few people ever do anything, even though almost everybody can look back at their life and go, I had an awesome idea, and then I watched someone else do it. Yep. But you don't have that story. No. <laughs> I'm really good at getting stuff done. So tell us, somebody watch it here, what are the keys as an entrepreneur to getting big things done? Because you built, do you have it public any of the numbers on your, any of your companies? Nope. Revenue? But significant millions, tens, millions, and so on and so forth. Is that safe to say? Are yeah. we allowed to say that? So, okay, if we just walk through this execution, if you had three things, five things, what would they be? that make all the difference and make you so much better at executing? Sure, so the first thing is when people are executing, the big mistake that they try to do is they take the whole big picture and try to get it done right away, right? Okay. With executing, it's always about breaking it down into small bite sizes. Okay. You gotta think about it. Google, Microsoft, all these companies, Apple, they didn't get to where they are now by just saying, hey, we're gonna start a company like Google and we're gonna be the largest search engine in the world we're gonna make billions of dollars a year. It's little things all the way from getting the first version up. It may not be perfect. It's how can you get something up as quick as possible and get feedback. It could even be wireframe drawings or you drawing something on a napkin and showing people and getting feedback. Okay. People think executing means it has to go out there, it has to work perfectly with no flaws, no bugs, and you're ready to go to make money. Executing is always about how do you break it out? And you have to continually get feedback throughout the whole process. See, most people, they say, hey, I have this idea and I wanna make money or I wanna do X, Y, and Z, so I'm gonna do go from A to Z all at once. But if you don't get feedback from people, you may be going in the wrong direction, and if you do, you've just wasted all this time. So the key is not going to A to Z all at once, it's how do you go to A to B really quick, get feedback, go to B to C, get feedback, and you keep doing that until you get to Z. What's an example where you ignored this advice, maybe you made a mistake, you went A to M, and then you got feedback that you had wasted all this time versus another example where you did it right. Sure, so with Kiss Metrics, it's a B2B company. When we first started, we had a million bucks in funding. We okay. took that million dollars and we said, we're gonna go create this analytics solution that helps companies solve all their social media traffic and figure out if it's worth spending money and the ROI. And we started creating this whole product. We literally spent a million dollars on it. Okay. And once it was done, people were like, we don't need that. These social networks already show us the data. Why would huh. we use yours? Theirs is free, right? It sounds silly and naive. At that time, the social networks weren't great at it. Our product still did it better. But companies were like, we're happy enough with what they have. It's like saying, I want to create a better Google. Right. But if everyone's already happy with what they have with Google, why right. would they switch? Yes. Right? There's no pain point for them. Yes. So we literally wasted a million dollars and a bit more than a year. Huh. Now, what's ex so that's where you did it wrong. What's an example where you did it right? Sure. So another example of doing it right is, uh, or one example, with Crazy Egg, it's a tool that shows you where people click on your website and where they don't. What we ended up learning when we were doing consulting years ago, people would come to us saying, hey, we're spending all this money on advertising and we don't know what's happening, why people are buying and why others aren't. 
because just like any store, you go to a department store like Nordstrom's, probably 98, 99% of the people that walk in the store, maybe a bit lower, maybe a bit higher, I don't know, don't buy anything, right? Mm -hmm. So we're just like, all right, well, how would you like us to solve it? And most of the corporations came back to us saying, we see all these numbers, but we're not all numbers people. Can't you show us something visual that explains why people aren't buying and why they are buying? So we created multiple versions until we got it right. And we were getting feedback throughout the whole process until customers were like, yes, we would pay for this. And the main difference was when I created Crazy Egg, I actually didn't have much money. Huh. So, so having too much money makes you a little, can make you bloated. Yes. So what were the time frames? So when you did it wrong, it was one whole year. You thought you had the right idea on day one. One year later, you have a million dollars less in your bank account and you have a failed product. So now you do it the right way, like you're talking about going with Crazy Egg. What, how much time did you need to make each version to get feedback? Less than a month. So in a month, you got something up, you presented it, does this fit? And would they say, yeah, but make a little change to it or something? Yes, yeah, so technically we were trying getting feedback every single week. Okay. Uh, but we had major differences in versions, usually in 30 days. Okay. And eventually, when companies were saying, giving us little things like they're nitpicking, yes. at that point we knew like, all right, they're ready to pay these little nitpicks like, oh, a button should be here, or this should be moved here. Like, it's not gonna impact if someone's gonna buy something or not. Right. And in how many iterations did you go through? It took a week or a month before you had something that was badass. Six months roughly, six iterations, and we started having paying customers. And it works so well by doing the iterations that we were actually releasing it to the news websites, the little minor iterations, and they were blogging about it, and we had 10,000 people on the waiting list before we launched. Huh, so not only does it work to keep your error rate down in terms of not building something nobody wants, but it also creates buzz before it's even ready to go. That's correct. And people love getting something they think they're not supposed to get. Yes. We were talking a little bit about money. And you've been broke, yes. and you've been in possession of a good bit of money. If you're going back in time, and you're broke again, or don't have much money, what were the one or two things that somebody watching this who struggled with money or just started to make money, what has made all the difference in your life? A few things. One, focus on your passion. If you're really good at something or you love something, you're more likely to spend more time on it, get better at it, and not give up, right? Yeah. Look at Malcolm Gladwell, right? He talks about how many hours you have to spend. Right. 10,000 plus. Exactly. 14,000 hours. So why not focus on something that you love? Because if you don't love it, you're not going to spend 10,000 hours. Yeah. It's very hard. For example, you don't like flying on the airplane, right? Right. As long as if I told you, if you fly for 10,000 right. hours, you know, X, Y, and Z can happen. It's like I pulling teeth. never do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter how much money you're going to make or little money you can make from it, right? The key is, one, pick something that you like, yeah. and two, just only focus on that. A lot of people, when they're trying to get back at it with the business, make money, they look at, they have this shiny object syndrome. They're like, oh, someone else is making money here, someone else is doing that, and I could be doing this, and look how successful they are. Just focus on what you're good at and focus on what you love. Because if you do those two things and you really try to help people out solve their problems and you try to solve their problems better and more uh, efficiently than other people, eventually you will do well. What about somebody watching who, who's not yet an entrepreneur? So they're working somewhere else, they've got a family, they've got to produce income, yet they want to do something bigger and want to create, like you said, these automated streams of income like you have every time people watch your automated webinar, you two people pay 6,000 each, 12,000 bucks, it's money on autopilot, but they're not yet there. How do you make the jump without going broke? How'd you make the jump? So I started when I was so young, I was yes. in high school, that I didn't have any.